I think whether one sticks to a script or whether one improvises a lot, changes things, depends on two things really, it depends on the nature of the project and whether that is the plan, you know, from the beginning that you're going to improvise and create things on set. And the other thing that it depends on is how much time you have. Because if you're going to go very quickly, if you're going to shoot a film, say, in 11 days or 18 days or two days, as Roger Corman did, you know, then, then you really have to stick to the script. You have to get the script as good as you can and develop a working style where the actors come to the set already knowing their dialogue and you jump in and you just shoot, 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 shoot. And there isn't time to improvise on such a short schedule. Um, unless, of course, the strategy from the beginning is that you're going to improvise. And then you have to pick your actors and work with them in such a way that they're prepared for a very rapid form of improvisation. So it de depends on those two things, on the amount of time you have, which often depends on the amount of money you have, and on, um, on the taste of the director and the actors and the project. When I began, I was very into the idea that we would improvise, we would create things, we would deviate from the script. The script was just a guideline or a blueprint, which we would then change. Um, but as I have become older, I have become lazier. And um, I now like really to get the script as good as possible and then just shoot it. Um, because the script, if the script is good, then boy, it's easy. You, know? you just shoot the script and go and have martinis. I was originally trying to make a film of a rock and roll tour of Nicaragua in the days of the Sandinistas in the 1980s. And I was going to go to Nicaragua with Joe Strummer, uh, Elvis Costello, and the Pogues, and um, film uh, their concert tour of different cities of Nicaragua. Um, but we weren't able to raise the money for this project. And it was very embarrassing because they had all agreed to make themselves available for a month um, of filming, uh, of this tour. So then a friend of mine who was the producer of Sid and Nancy said, why don't we make uh, a film instead, a dramatic film? Maybe we can raise the money for that, provided that it stars these musicians. So that was how that came about. And Joe Strummer was instrumental really in creating the film because he liked Spain and Andalusia, and he really wanted to go and be in a Western. Um, so he, in a sense, was a kind of, was one of the creative spirits behind that film. Um, Courtney Love at that time was neither an actress nor a musician. I mean, she was quite young. I guess she was in her early 20s, you know, and really her goal was to become famous, you know, um, which she succeeded at, you know. Um, and so, so she really comes from this background of just ambition and desire to be in the public eye. Um, and fortunately, she's also, I think, a very good actress. Some people just have the ability to be actors, you know, and other people don't. Um, and sometimes musicians, you think about Bob Dylan or Bowie, you know, or Mick Jagger. I mean, none of them are very good actors. I mean, they're wonderful performers, um, but wooden actors, not Neil Young, another one, wonderful performer, but not a good actor. Um, and then you have someone like Tom Waits, who is a marvelous actor. So it does, it's not guaranteed that a musician can be an actor as well. There's some, some can and some can't. And likewise, it's not guaranteed that an actor can be a musician. We made the little documentary, Back to Hell, and we interviewed a lot of the people who had been in the film. Um, but one person that, that we couldn't interview was, uh, was Courtney Love, because she, basically because she'd become too famous and was kind of, didn't really want to deal with her, her sordid past in Italian westerns or spaghetti westerns in Spain. So, um, so I thought instead, we'll just put somebody else in there and have her pretend to be Courtney Love. And the woman who uh, pretends to be Courtney is uh, a woman called Olivia Sandoval. And so uh, 
I think Olivia does a very good job of playing Cordy, or even though she doesn't look like it. I, both times, uh, I kind of forced Alex de la Iglesia to let me be in his film, um, because the first time was um, with Perdita Durango, and I was in Mexico working on another film. I think I was acting in a film for Arturo Ribstein. Um, and Alex de la Iglesia had come to Mexico and was making this film partially in Mexico, partially in the United States, and wanted to get in touch with the actor Harry Dean Stanton, who I had worked with. So, so they got in touch with me and they said, can you introduce us to Harry Dean Stanton? And I said, oh, Harry Dean's very difficult, you know, and he doesn't like to travel. He won't go to Mexico, there's no chance, you know, don't even think about it. However, I too am an actor. Um, and so I got Harry Dean's part in Perdita Durango. And then, um, 10 years later, I get another email from Alex de la Iglesia. I haven't heard from him in 10 years, you know. And then I get an email, Alex, my friend, hi, I haven't spoken to you in a long time. Do you know, um, I forget who he was asking me for, but it was the, do, you, do I know the address of, or the phone number of Michael Caine or of, of some other very famous British actor, you know? Laurence Olivier, Richard Burton, or somebody. He was dead as well. Um, and I, um, so I emailed him back and I go, Alex, my friend. Um, unfortunately, I, no, I don't know the telephone number of Michael Caine and Richard Burton is dead. However, I am alive and <laughs> available for your film. And so both times I kind of tricked him. I just say the act, I, well, whoever he asks me about, I either say they're dead or they're unavailable, you know. But here am I. The idea of Movie Drone was really that the BBC had under license a lot of obscure and strange films that they'd kind of acquired and didn't really know what to do with, you know. Um, and a producer at the BBC, director and producer called Nick Jones, came up with the idea that they would make um, like a series of these films and have somebody provide a kind of a linking theme for all the films. Not that there was any linking, any link between them at all. They were all completely different. I mean, it was like Diva and, and Alphaville and Yojimbo. Um, but that was the fun of it as well. The fun was to kind of treat them all under this generic headline of cult movie. And, and then I was able, and, and, and so for some reason they asked me to present these things. And, and for me, it was like a little bit of film, like a film literacy class, you know, a critical studies class, because I could talk about acting or I could talk about editing strategies or, or cinematography or the, the prehistory of the film. Um, and if I didn't like the film, I could say, you know, this film is terrible. You know, the, this film that we're about to watch is real rubbish, you know. However, it does have, this is interesting, you know. The art department is interesting, you know, or there's one good performance in the whole movie. Um, and, and I think that was the only time that I can remember when a film, when a presenter of something was actually allowed to say, you know, this is shit, you know. That didn't happen too often. I, well, when I was a kid, I wanted to become a paleontologist. You know, I wanted to go out to the desert and dig up dinosaur bones. That was my goal. But in order to become a paleontologist, you have to actually have a whole bunch of university degrees. You have to understand chemistry, uh, geology, obviously. Um, you had to understand a lot of things that I wasn't very competent at. Um, so realizing sadly that I could not become a paleontologist, I had to set my career ambition aside and to become a filmmaker instead. Um, but I was always very attracted to films with dinosaurs in them. And Godzilla is a sort of a dinosaur, isn't he? Or some sort of a nuclear dinosaur like mutant. Um, and of course, I like the Ray Harryhausen films very much because they often had dinosaurs in them. Um, and really my favorite film, or one of my favorite films, is King Kong, the original King Kong, which has both King Kong himself, but also a number of dinosaurs. And I also did enjoy um, the Frankenstein films. I mean, both Frank the Frankenstein monster and King Kong are very misunderstood. And I like the actor who played the original Frankenstein, Boris Karloff.